CRT glitch effects. The CRT TV glitch effect is popping up all the time in music videos now. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how you can get that effect in your videos. If you haven't seen the effect, it's really cool. It basically looks like if you're watching the footage, it looks normal in the music video. And then all of a sudden it cuts to a shot of a TV that looks like it's like broken, distorted, just like the worst looking TV you've ever seen. And then it cuts back and they use this with all sorts of overlays, cuts, there's all sorts of creative ways you can do it. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about a few ways you can get this effect, whether it's in post or whether it is using it the practical way by getting an old CR TV. So actually last year with our company Cinepax, we wanted to create our own glitch effects product. And I had some of these old glitch effects products, uh, they're called Video Sense. And basically what you do is you take your video signal, whether it's from a VHS camera, your camera, or uh, your computer, you take that signal, you plug it into this little box, it distorts the signal, either you display on an old TV or you capture in other methods, which I'll teach you guys how to do. So I had one of these old scents that I bought offline somewhere. It was quite expensive. I think I ended up spending like 175 bucks for it and it ended up breaking within a few months. So we knew we wanted to create something quality that would last a long time and would just be a quality effect that you could do in person. The video synth is basically like an effects plugin, but in real life. We spent over a year developing, testing, manufacturing our glitch effects box. We only have a limited quantity of these left. We're probably gonna do another run in 2022, but there's probably about, I think we have about 40 left at the time of making this video. So it's linked down below if you guys wanna get it. Um, but I'm gonna show you some other ways that you can get this effect without using a glitch effects box. So the first thing I recommend to get is a CRTV. Even if you don't have a video synth, you can even record this screen and play your footage off it and you'll still get that gritty old TV look. So if you can pick one of these up, it's pretty easy. You can find them at Goodwill. You can ask around your family. Most people have these chilling in their basement. And the main thing you want is the this analog video input right here, which is this little yellow input right here. You can find these on Craigslist. You can find them on OfferUp, Facebook. I have a small one because it's nice and compact to keep in the house. Um, there's some that are really big and that can definitely work, but it kind of sucks keeping that large TV around. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to do it without this. That's going to be later. You can skip ahead. I'll have timestamps below, but let's go ahead and use this first. So we have the TV. The next thing we're going to need is our input source. I'm going to be using my laptop so you can actually pull up your video. You can pull up your timeline and you can basically use this as a separate monitor. You can also use a camera and you can also use a VHS camera. And the cool thing about using a VHS is that you can actually just plug straight into the glitch effects or your video synth uh, because that's an analog output. You're not gonna have to use this converter right here, which we'll get to. So uh, I'm gonna use the laptop though. So if you have a VHS camera, way easier for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up some footage. So I have HDMI running out from my laptop. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that HDMI and we are going to plug it into this. This is an HDMI to AV converter. So basically you plug HDMI in and then you get AV out. And that's the yellow cable that we're gonna need right there. So I'm gonna plug this HDMI in and then I'm just powering this uh, with USB, which is included. And if it doesn't work, um, you can always switch this on and off right here. NTSC, which it should be on, and then you can switch it from PAL and then just switch it back and forth uh, if it's not working for you. We do include that if you purchase our glitch effects, but you can buy them separately. I'm gonna link everything down below that I mentioned, all the cables that you'll need, pretty simple stuff. So once we have that, we're gonna take a video cable and we're gonna plug that into our glitch effects. So plugging that in, the left one is the in. You can see it has a little arrow on it that's going into the glitch effects. And then we're basically gonna plug another one where the arrow's pointing out and then that's gonna run out into the TV. So that's gonna be the glitched, messed up signal coming out of the glitch effect. So let's go ahead and take another AV cable and we're gonna go ahead and plug that right in here. 
and then that's gonna run out into the TV. The glitch effects power is just from a regular cable that we include, and then you could plug that into USB as well. Um, so they're both running off USB, and then we can actually switch the glitch effects on, and you can see we have the light. So this right one right here is the bypass, so that's with effects and without effects. So with the lights off, there's no effects going on. Turn it on, it's running through the glitch effects, and we're actually getting those effects. And the way that I usually do this, and it's pretty much the most effective way, is actually recording your screen with your camera. And there's a few tips for this. Tip one is going to be set your camera on a tripod. You don't want your camera moving at all. Next, you wanna frame up as much as the TV that you can get in your shot. Try and fill the entire screen with the TV, but don't cut off any of the edges. It's not gonna fit perfectly because this is a four by three aspect ratio, and our cameras film in 16 by nine. Next, make sure your room is completely dark. You don't want the glare of a window or your computer monitor shining on this reflective screen. So make sure to turn off your computer and close any of those blinds. Then you're gonna to wanna to set your camera on all manual settings. Set manual focus and set manual exposure on how bright the TV is. This is important so it doesn't change while you're recording. Next, you're gonna to wanna to play around with your shutter speed. Do whatever looks best. Go below 50, go above 50. Keep playing with it until you get the best results. This is kinda of tricky and it really depends on your scenario. Now you should be pretty much set. Now just hit record and start to glitch your footage. So one more quick rundown, HDMI coming out of my computer. That's going into the AV to HDMI. That yellow cable is going into the glitch effects. Then we're running another video cable out of the glitch effects into the TV. And then we have it playing our video. And then we're recapturing this with a camera. Then we're gonna take that SD card out and we're going to put it into our editing software. And then we can overlay that footage over our actual video and then we'll have a glitch version of our video. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is what the TV looks like with no glitch effects on. It's running through the glitch effects, but we do not have bypass on. So we're not getting any effects. So first thing we wanna do is turn all of our effects to the left and this puts them at the lowest intensity. Now what we can do is we can flip that switch on and then now it is running through the glitch effects. And you can see the screen has changed a little bit. What we can do is we can start playing with the first effect intensity and we can see it affects the highlights and it gives us a really contrasty image. Now if we combine that with edges, we get a really unique effect and this can definitely be used as some type of overlay. Um, and yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite effects right here. This, we can intercut this with our footage and post. I'll show you guys that. It's really easy to do and it speeds up the editing process a lot. So we can just start playing, adding in all these other ones and you can create countless amounts of, this is the distortion uh, knob right here. And you can see it gets a little crazy. We can even switch this on and off. So if you wanna like flicker it to the beat or something like that, that's definitely possible. This last one, Starve, adds some really colorful effects in here. And we can really just play around with these until we get something we like. You can even get really crazy. You can do this effect, you can record it, and then you could actually play it back again and you can just continue to glitch it and glitch it even more until you have a crazy messed up image. So now that we've ran it through, let's go ahead and grab our SD card and bring it into Adobe Premiere. So I lied, we're actually not gonna hop into editing yet. I'm gonna show you the two other ways that you can capture the footage if you didn't like that first way. The CRT TV is the best results. You can push your image the furthest, but it does take a lot of setup and you do need a CRT TV. This next setup is one of the easier ones and it goes straight into your computer. So there's not, uh, you don't have to have your camera recording the TV, really simple. So the first thing you're gonna need for this one is a video capture card. And basically uh, you're gonna take your video source that's gonna go through the converter uh, HDMI to AV, unless if you have a VHS camera, it's gonna go into the glitch box and then basically that output is gonna go into an AV capture card which is plugged directly into your computer. You're gonna capture that using OBS or the software that comes with the capture card. The capture cards I have is, this is one of my favorite, is the Elgato Video Capture. And this one's a little bit pricey, but if you have a VHS camera, uh, you may already have this. 
Uh, it's what I use to capture my VHS footage. I actually have a video on this on how to capture VHS footage. You can actually take your VHS footage and make it look even worse using this glitch effects box. Um, and then there's also cheaper alternatives like this little guy right here. This one's like dirt cheap. It's like six bucks and it's just got a little cute little USB like that. This is not as reliable as that though, but this can still work in a pinch, but um, you can push, I've, saw, I've seen that you can push your image a lot further. And I'm gonna show you what it means to push your image because when we start pushing it and we put all the knobs to the furthest right, the image cuts out and it turns blue. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into my computer. Then I'm going to take the output from my glitch effects box and I'm going to plug that into here and then it should show up. I'm going to open up the Elgato software. You can also open up OBS as well or any other capture software that you want. I can actually just do a round trip from my computer. I can basically take an extra HDMI out as a separate monitor, play my editing timeline, and I can edit it live to see what it looks like. And the cool thing about this is you get the file right away. So if I click stop recording, um, I can go ahead and trim whatever I want right here. Uh, this is in the Elgato capturing software. Same thing for OBS, you'll still get the file. Um, it's already four by three right here. So I just click continue. And then now I have that file. So now I can import that straight into my edit and I can edit that live. So I'm going to show you guys that if you want to skip ahead, you can click in the timeline and go to that. I'm going to show you the last way. And this is probably one of the most complicated. So the last way that you can do this is the source from my laptop. I went HDMI to AV into the glitch effects. Then I took that output and I put it into an AV to HDMI. So I took that analog signal and I turned it back into HDMI. Then you can either output that to a TV monitor, like an actual HDMI TV, um, which I did for the, what was that? I did that for the LED screen, so I played it on there. Or you can put it into an external recorder. And the external recorder, like an Atomos, you can actually record that screen, so you can actually capture your footage that way. So I'm gonna try that right now. It's a little bit tricky, it's gonna be hard to show, but that's basically the rundown on how you do it. So you can actually see that setup I just talked about right here and I was able to get it to work so you can see that it going back to HDMI and running into the Atomos. And then the cool thing about this is we can actually record the effects onto SSD. And the one thing that I really like about this method is that it actually records in 16 by 9 so we don't have to scale it up that much and it and you just have the file as well. It's a lot more work, but it does yield some really nice effects as you can see. So now we can finally hop into the edit and I can compare all three different, uh, I can compare all three different types of footage that we gathered. And then at the very end, I will show you guys how to get this effect without using a glitch effects box. So let's check it out. Let's say this is our music video edit that we played on the glitch effects that we glitch. So we have the clean footage right here. This can be your edit. This is the CRT TV that we recorded. Um, you can see that's the TV. Um, and then you can see if I fast forward here, we have all the crazy glitches. This is the external recorder. This is the Atomos. Then this is the capture card. So usually what you wanna do is you want to just try and sync it, sync it to the very beginning of where the music video starts. So I'm gonna start it right there. We see the little lyrical lay symbol and let's find where that is on the actual music video. Boom, right there. And then we just wanna try and get it as close as possible. So also what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scale this all the way up and then you can fix the rotation. My rotation was just a little bit off. I think it's gonna be negative one, maybe not. It actually looks fine and you can scale this wherever you want it. So now let's see how close we are. If I cut away, let's see if I turn off the eyeball, should be pretty close. So let's find some parts where we really glitched it out. So we have like the shot of, I believe that's Tiger right there. There's something really cool I bet we can do with that. So it's playing, here we are. There's all the cameos and 
One cool, yeah, see, that's already really cool. It cuts in there, but we can also pre-glitch this. We can also transition into it. So let's say we change that blending mode to screen. You can see we get this crazy outline because as we look, this scene is really dark and contrasty. We can even make it more contrasty by bringing up the brightness, crunching the blacks a little bit, adding some contrast, and then now we turn it on screen and we get this crazy overlay and we can move this however we want um and i have a uh, uniform scale turned off so i can kind of play with it and stretch the image but this looks really cool and then it transitions just like that look how cool that is that is sick you would not be able to get that if you were not in post so we could even like fade this in see it can even happen like this can work on all these other effects really easy i didn't have to rotoscope i didn't have to do anything it just played just like that and we can easily just cut back out from it let's say we don't want those effects anymore and we can even do this so this is kind of white it looks like so let's bring that up let's bring up the whites and then so screen obviously isn't going to work because so what we would want to do is we want to use multiply and then that kind of gives the opposite effect so you can also play around with uh your brightness on things so we have the whites turned all the way up so this might help and then we can even just do what we did before and we can like add like a default transition and we can stretch that out. So kind of fades away, something like that. Really simple. Like right here, we could turn on multiply as well because we have like a lot of white, but then it makes, yeah, something cool like that. So you can just do little flashes throughout your music video. You can kind of see the editing process here. This footage definitely looks the best to me. Um, I would say the CRT TV is the best. The capture card actually, I think came out the worst. It came out really pixelated, which can be a cool look, but it's not my favorite. Let's sync it on the title right here. So if I see this shot right here, we'll do like right when it came up. Let's go frame by frame. So if I scale that to frame size, and then if I scale it all the way up, and then we could even do the uniform scale if we want to stretch it out just a little bit, and then boom. So it doesn't look the worst, but it definitely looks very low quality. Um, so I have this middle layer turned off, I'll lock that. So we can do the same stuff, we can cut in, but honestly, it's not my favorite. Uh, I like the CRT TV better, um, but you can see it does definitely does work. So this footage definitely looks a lot lower resolution. You can see it gets pretty blotchy here at the end. I'm not sure what happened. This is through the capture card. It looks pretty glitchy and low resolution. If you like that look, it's fine, but just comparing it to the CRT TV, you can see it still looks really high quality but we're getting those crazy glitches. Lastly, let's check out the external recorder. I actually was very surprised by this one, so let's find where to sync. And we'll just find that first frame of video right there. And then let's turn those two off. We'll lock these. And then let's go ahead and drag that in. So first frame of video right there. Let's sync it. And then this one's already 16 by nine and 4K, so I didn't have to scale it up at all, which was really nice. So I actually really do like the way this footage looks. And like I said before, we can easily color it a little bit, add some more contrast, um, saturate it. You kind of want this stuff to look crazy. So like there's some really cool stuff right there. Like, look at that. Like we can really edit that in. Here's the regular music video. And we could like chop that in, like be a transition. So we can, like we did before, we can play with effects. We could go screen. Let's see what that looks like. Let's play around. Look at multiply. That looks pretty cool. And then we could change that to screen because we have a lot of black going on right here. Yeah, and then it kind of like outlines everything. And of course, we can add like some flashes. Like let's say we go to effects, we grab on levels. And let's just say we keyframe that out as like a little flash. Something simple, I'm just playing around here. But you can also play around with different blending modes. So we could also drag on like difference and you can get some 
different type looking effects. And even if you wanted to take this into After Effects, you could do some rotoscoping. Like let's just say you wanted this car glitched out. I am not gonna do that, but you can see what kind of possibilities there really are with this. So you could just have this car and you could also just change that blending mode to multiply or you could do screen or there's a lot you can do with this. If you did screen, you could invert it as well. See, I just inverted it and then we have like this crazy mask of the car. It's kind of wild looking. Um, I like the CRT TV the most, the external recorder, and then the capture card. I've had better luck with the capture card, so it's definitely worth playing around with. Um, but you can see this footage looks really great. So lastly, like I promised, I will show you guys how to do this. We had to go into After Effects for this one because this plugin takes a lot of computing power. So it's called Signal. I'm going to link it down below. Um, also, if you want, you could check out my homie, Brian Delamata. He has some great tutorials on like some CRT glitch type stuff similar to this uh, without plugins, so usually free. But this plugin works great. It's just so slow on the computer. I don't like using it. Uh, you can already see it kind of has like that glitch type look and then we can go around and we can really just play around with all these settings and you could keyframe these individually so you can see as i start to play around um there's a lot of crazy stuff that starts to happen and it definitely looks similar to what we are getting in the glitch effects type stuff so there's some really cool stuff here um you just really have to play around with it and mess around with these parameters and you can really get some different looking stuff. So I like this, but it is also very slow. It does not beat Adobe Premiere having these, like this ProRes file that you can just cut with super quick, super easy. You're not gonna have exporting problems with this. This, your computer may crash. So I always hate playing around with plugins. Every time I use plugins, they always crash. I love doing it in camera, so that's what I'm gonna do, but I definitely wanted to show you guys this plugin because it is pretty sick and there is a lot to play around with. It's definitely a lot better than Red Giant VHS. So that's pretty much my entire tutorial on the video synth and why we created the glitch effects box. You can get the effect using plugins like I showed. I'm actually plugged in right now. I have the VHS running in the glitch effects into this TV right here. And you can see I can easily glitch the VHS footage live. It's pretty cool. I have the audio synced up so can get a lot of crazy effects like I'm showing right now. Um, but yeah, the glitch effects is a lot of fun. If you guys want to check it out for yourself, I have everything linked down in the description. If you guys do want to check it out, it's a lot of fun to even just play around with. People use these all the time for like live events and stuff. Um, we tried to create something that's affordable, but quality as well. So we couldn't go too cheap because we wanted to make sure it lasts and has really quality effects like you're seeing right now. So. If you guys have any questions or problems getting these effects, feel free to comment down below. I will do my best to answer uh, all the comments down below. That's pretty much it today. I'm Tyler Casey. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please leave a like and a comment down below. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.